In the last video, we learned how a student financed the business by first winning the lottery, therefore giving the student money. Uh, in fact, the student won $50,000. And the student then took that $50,000 and opened up a brand new business account. And the, the student invested $40,000 of the personal cash to finance the business. So the business's cash, mind you, this is the business entity, not the individual student anymore, but now we must keep track of the student's activity separate and distinct from the business activity. Cash went up 40,000 and contributed equity went up 40,000. Now, we call this contributed equity because a business can a business's equity can go up when the owner puts money in, but the equity can also go up when the business starts operations and begins earning equity. So in the far right column, let's have contributed equity be one account, and the second account, we're gonna call that earned equity. So now we have two accounts under equity: contributed equity and earned equity. Now if this student wants to start a bike business and $40,000 is not enough, let's assume that the student writes a business plan and is able to get a loan from the bank. Uh, it could be Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Umqua Bank, but additional financing may be required. So let's assume the, biz uh, the student writes a business plan for the business and secures a $210,000 loan. So cash would go up and we'll call this loan payable, will increase the business debt by 210,000. So let's review. Assets must always equal liabilities plus equity. The assets here are only cash so far. We have one liability, loan payable, and we have two equity accounts, and I apologize for my penmanship here. Contributed equity is the amount contributed by the owner. And later on, when the business starts selling bicycles, we'll have some earned equity. This video is called financing the business. The very first transactions for a business are almost always financing activities because when cash goes up from the owner's personal investment, the cash that goes into the business is the business's first source of cash financing. Hence, if we had to label this change in cash, we would label it with a financing or an F, and I'm gonna circle F here. If 40,000 isn't enough for the business to, uh, to uh, afford all of its startup costs, it must get additional financing from the bank. So we got 40,000 from the owner's contributed equity and we received 210,000 from the bank loan. Now, oh happy day, the business can begin investing in long-term startup costs. So let's have the owner of this business invest $180,000 in a building. And I'll abbreviate that BLDG. So the building goes up 180,000. Cash goes down 180,000. And we're going to label this an I for investing activity. Because now that we're using cash to buy things that will last us more than a year, like a building, that long-term purchase is known as an investing activity. And I'm going to abbreviate that as an I. Now, most businesses must incur short-term startup costs as well. Let's assume the business pays $2,400 to pay rent for the next year. Prepaid rent, we'll call this. And let's say rent is exactly, um, um, let's make it 200 a month times 12 dollars, or uh, times 12 months. If the business paid a full year's rent in advance, cash would go down, prepaid rent would go up, and instead of an investing activity, since we have to pay for rent every year, we're going to call that a short-term O for operating activity. So startup costs can be investments in long-term assets, or they can be short-term purchases that will be used up in less than a year. 
A short-term use of cash that would be used up in a year or less is usually called or classified as an operating activity. So let's stop a moment. The business got its, received its initial cash financing from the owner's investment. It secured additional financing from the bank loan. It then incurred its first major startup costs by expending $180,000 by investing in the building. Then it incurred its first short-term startup cost by buying prepaid rent. Now let's assume it also makes an advertisement on the local radio or TV station and spends $1,000. This too is an operating outflow because it will be used up in the very short run. But advertising is usually not considered a prepayment if we're going to run the ad this month. It, rather, it's going to be a reduction in equity. And any reductions in equity that occur frequently are going to be called expenses. So this outflow of $1,000 for advertising is going to be known as a reduction of equity earned, and we're going to call that advertising expense. Now, the next thing that the company buys will be some bicycles. And let's assume this company buys $10,000 worth of bike inventory. We'll call this bike inventory. And it's an asset. I'll abbreviate that I-N-V-Y. Inventory goes up $10,000. The cash goes down $10,000. And since we're in business to buy and sell bikes, the purchase of inventory is also and operating activity. So notice how every change in cash can be classified according to its primary category. Is it a financing activity? Is it a long-term investing activity? Or is it a normal monthly or periodic, frequently recurring operating activity? So let me summarize here. The owner financed the business with a $40,000 personal investment and received a loan of $210,000. With that $250,000 cash financing, the owner went up, went on a buying spree. It incurred startup costs of $180,000, which is a long-term investment, and it made three expenditures of cash to incur short-term operating uh, uh, benefits to the uh, business. One of those operating outflows is prepaid rent, the other outflow was, another outflow was to pay for advertising, and the third outflow was to buy inventory. This ends video number six, financing the business and incurring startup costs.